他是著名的临床神经科学家，被国际顶尖医学期刊《柳叶刀》誉为“负重研究领跑者”。他曾入选二零二零年美国斯坦福大学全球前百分之二顶尖科学家。针对急性脑出血的早期强化降压研究，改变了全球的临床指南。今年七月，这位澳大利亚医学家全职加盟复旦大学，任内脑智能科学与技术研究院特聘教授。他就是世界负重组织后任主席克雷格·安德森。Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Craig Anderson. I'm a neurologist. That's a brain doctor, and I have spent 30 years studying stroke, what causes strokes, how to treat, and how to prevent and recover from a stroke. Let me begin by explaining what a stroke is. Most strokes are due to a blockage of blood flow in the brain, a clot. But the other type of strokes, which are more serious, and I'll elaborate on that them shortly, is bleeding in the brain. Now, I like to think about, and I explain to my patients that the circulation to the brain is like a tree. If there's a blockage of the trunks and the big branches, then that's much more serious. There's more death of the uh, branches and the leaves uh, uh, that follow downstream. But you can have strokes that can affect the small branches and the small leaves, and they're minor strokes. If we could do anything to get rid of stroke, it would be for all of us to control our blood pressure much better. In China, there are probably two million people a year who die from a stroke. Around the world, 20 million people are having a stroke every year, and this is a huge problem, and it calls for uh, lots of effort uh, in a united way to uh, solve this problem and offer better treatments. The other risk factors are obviously, and you know these well, are lifestyle factors. Smoking, lack of exercise, too fatty diets, and too salty diets. In fact, again, this is a big problem in China. You love your salt and your spicy food, but unfortunately, heavy salt increases uh, blood pressure. But there is an easy solution to that, and I always use this trick myself when I'm working in China, is fruit. Fruit is, is very good to reduce the salt from your body. But as well, we need to make sure that we can overall reduce the amount of salt in our cooking and our diet, regular exercise. And if you do have high blood pressure, you need to take medication regularly for that. There's another big problem that's occurring as we're getting older, and that is problems of heart disease and irregularities of the heart. If the heart's in problem, that causes uh, clots to go from the heart to the brain and again cause the blockage in the circulation. Let me return to this problem of hemorrhagic stroke. It accounts for maybe 20 or 30 percent of all strokes in the population. The most important hemorrhagic type of stroke is bleeding within the brain. Uh, the blood is, comes from a rupture of a blood vessel within the brain. That's called intracerebral hemorrhage or ICH. This is the most serious type of stroke because your brain's in a box, the skull. And if the blood is growing inside and expanding, it's got nowhere to go and it builds up pressure. And that pressure can squeeze the brain so severely that you can die very quickly. And then obviously having that blood, it splits the brain like splitting cheese and where that can occur can cause some damage. There is another type of hemorrhage. It's called subarachnoid hemorrhage. And that's most commonly due to rupture of a blister of a blood vessel, an aneurysm. It's about five to 10% of strokes for reasons we don't quite understand. So what are the warning signs of a stroke? A hemorrhage, being more severe is more dramatic. So 
if there's a paralysis, a weakness, or a loss of speech, or a collapse, everything's more dramatic, and you could go unconscious very quickly. For that subarachnoid hemorrhage, the bleeding on the surface of the brain, that's often described as being hit on the back of the head with a bat. It's a severe, very bad headache. But most strokes from the blockages is just varying degrees of something going wrong quickly uh, with the body. And we've learnt now that when these symptoms occur, you need to get to hospital quickly because we can treat strokes. The two best treatments we have are clot busting approaches. When there's a blockage, we can give a treatment that is to dissolve the clot. But that only works in the first few hours and that's why it's important to get to hospital. If it's a big clot now, and this has only been available in the last few years, we can go in through the groin with a small de metal device, pass the device above the heart, into the blood vessels, up into the brain, like almost like a corkscrew, and we can pull the clot out, or we can suck out the clot, and it can save a person's life. And this is increasing in availability throughout China, and it's one of the major revolutions of stroke care over the last several years to advance knowledge in collaboration with many doctors in China and around the world. We've focused on intracerebral hemorrhage, ICH, for a couple of reasons. First of all, 25 years ago, we did a big clinical trial called PROGRESS. It was the first clinical trial that was done with China as part of an international study for the prevention of stroke. Enrolled over 6,000 patients, of which 2,000 were from China, because it reinforced the importance of blood pressure control after you've had a stroke for long-term prevention. A highly impressive beneficial effect to prevent recurrent strokes, prevent heart attacks, and improve your overall survival and well-being. But in that, sub, in that study, we found that the people who went into the study who'd had a bleed in the brain benefited the most. And it made us wonder if we started the blood pressure lowering much quicker, could that have saved the person's life? And that's what we embarked on, and we've done a series of projects over 20 years. And I do randomised controlled trials, and we do it on an international scale, and we've been very successful partnering with people in China for randomised controlled trials. We allocate participants to two treatments a control or an intervention or a comparison of two management strategies or treatments. And the special thing is the randomization. That balances out all of the characteristics between the two groups to test whether something works or not. We can follow up patients in studies and you're very good at that in China because you have so many patients coming back to all the clinics you can follow up many thousands, but you can never fully test whether something works. The only way to prove that a treatment benefits patients is a randomised controlled trial. So we tested this approach, blood pressure lowering and intracerebral haemorrhage, in four major trials, all with the same name, Interact. Interact one, two, three, four. And let me explain. The first trial was a test, proof of principle, about 300 patients, and it was an indication that we got a signal that there was uh, reduced bleeding in the brain, but it didn't convincingly tell us that the patients fully recovered. So we embarked on Interact 2, over 2,000 patients, and we got a borderline result, not absolutely convincing, but very persuasive. And 
what guidelines recommend when things are looking positive is probably useful. And that's what's called level two. We couldn't get to level one, which is definitely useful. So it's probably useful and it gives you some choices. So we embarked on the third study, Interact 3, and we did something very unique with this study. Instead of randomising the individual patient or, or participant, which is most common, we randomised hospitals. And the hospitals had to start on control to the intervention as a system of care, which included blood pressure control, uh, control of elevated sugars, in people who have some diabetes, rapid control of high temperature or fever or pyrexia, the blood thinness, anticoagulation. And this was put together as a protocol, coordination, system of care in all patients. We randomised 121 hospitals in 10 countries. And in China, we had 65 hospitals huge contribution and the publication was in the impressive journal the lancet very strongly positive and as a result of this contribution we have level one definitely useful but there was still something still not quite right did we really convince people that blood pressure lowering worked not quite so we embarked on our fourth trial with colleagues at Shanghai East Hospital. For patients with suspected stroke within two hours of the onset of symptoms in the ambulance, we, we, we did a study to compare blood pressure control on the retrieval to the hospital. We randomised uh, almost 2,500 patients just under three years. And in this study, we found that overall, it was a neutral trial, no difference. Improved survival, improved disability, reduced bleeding, less surgery, less infections, just within a short period of blood pressure control en route to the hospital, on average 20 minutes, you can save a person's life. So our challenge now is the use of technology, simple brain scans, maybe a, a, a blood marker from a finger prick that can allow us to get a rapid diagnosis. Is it bleeding in the brain? Is it a clot? So what about the future and what's drawn me to work at Fudan University and to continue working in China where you're so successful and making uh, major advances? Well, Fudan University's got an extremely good reputation and the institute I have uh, adjoined has got uh, world-class scientists in mapping the brain function and the anatomy and using machine learning or artificial intelligence to predict the characteristics of people. They are also looking at ways we can stimulate the brain with uh, 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 magnetic fields. And I think that uh, the digital science discoveries that are going on in China are the best in the world. I've worked with uh, uh, doctors in uh, Shanghai and Beijing, and I work in partnership with people here, but there are very good uh, professors. In fact, I know I'm a journal, uh, journal editor, and I know the amount of science now that's coming out of China is just uh, phenomenal. What are the things that make randomised controlled trials very good in China? You're very organised. Your culture is an organised culture. You follow protocols and rules very well, and that's very important, but you have a good spirit. You're a proud country. You want to improve. You want to improve the country and you want to improve uh, your knowledge and make a difference. And I find that very encouraging and very infectious for me to work with you. And also, I'd like to leave a legacy, which is for future scientists. Let me end by again re-emphasizing the big problem of stroke in China.
but I know your government is committed to it and making considerable efforts. So having governments behind us who have a commitment to cardiovascular prevention, stroke prevention is very good. I'd also encourage you to acknowledge and benefit from the Healthy China strategy. You know, the best way to treat stroke is to prevent it from happening in the first place. Prevention, prevention, prevention. This is how we're going to solve the problem of stroke and you can be world leaders in showing that as well, like you've been world leaders in lifting your population out of poverty. So thank you very much for your attention.